Hello, and welcome to an episode of ES Repair. I am your host, Mr. Fixit. When optical drives were invented, they were once thought to be in a replacement to the hard drive, but later proved to be too slow and have lower densities than magnetic media. Now, optical drives are often used for archiving. Optical drives are commonly found in today's computers, from CD to Blu-ray drives. This video will break down all the terminologies associated with read-only media, ROM drives, and writers, also known as burners. The most important factor in optical drives is the speed at which data can be read from the disk. Many CD-ROM drives can read an 80-minute audio disk in one and a half minutes. That is 56 times the speed of a CD player. A CD player spins the disk between 214 to 497 RPMs. This is the basis for all CD drives called single speed. To reach 56x, the drive must spin the disk 27,800 RP 808 RPMs. A DVD player spins the disk between 570 to 1,515 RPMs for single speed. For a DVD drive to read a disk at 50x, the drive must spin the disk 75,743 RPMs. But disks risk shattering at high RPMs due to the centrifugal force imposed. Disks begin to wobble near 10,000 RPMs and can literally shatter at higher RPMs. So how do drives read a disk at 50x without the risk? Using two technologies called constant linear velocity and constant angular velocity, drives can read data at 50 times without spinning the disk at high RPMs. When a drive uses CLV, the data flow stays at a constant rate while the disk's RPM changes. When a disk is being read near the center, the spiral track is more tightly packed, causing the need to spin the disk faster. As the spiral track reaches the end, or the outer edge, the disk has to spin slower to keep the data at a constant rate. This can be seen in standalone players. Now to demonstrate what constant linear velocity is, I'm going to show you in this typical CD player. This CD player is a typical standalone CD player that you find in stereos, radios, portables, whatever. This is a typical CD player. Inside I have a CD with audio CD on it. And what I'm going to do is show you what the CLV does. When you put the disc in, give it a moment and let it read the disc. Then push play. Now notice how fast the disc is spinning. This is the maximum RPM that the disc spins because the data is tightly wrapped around the the center of the disk. CDs play this disk from the center to the outer edge. Playing track one, it plays from the center. Note how the fast the CD player is spinning the disk. Now watch what happens when I go to the last track. Did you notice what happened? The disc slowed down. What happens is in CLV, the data through throughput to the optical drive stays at a constant rate. As the optical pickup goes to the outer edge, the disc must slow down to maintain the constant data throughput to the optical drive or the optical pickup. This is a prime example of what CLV does. Now most optical drives will use CLV up to 12x speeds. 
Since drives cannot spin up or slow down the disk's RPM fast enough to maintain data throughput above 12x, constant angular velocity is used. An optical drive using CAV will increase the RPM to a set speed and maintain the speed while the data throughput varies. Data on a disk can be read faster on the outer edge than on the inner edge because the closer to the center, the tighter the data is packed. Some drives use partial CLV that only switch from CLV to CAV when the rotational limit is reached but requires additional hardware. To solve this problem, newer drives use zoned CLV. With zoned CLV, a disk is divided into several zones and each zone would have a set CLV speed. A drive using zoned CLV would use maximum RPM while reading the inner tracks of the disk and progressively decrease in discrete steps the RPM as the data is read near the outer tracks. A disk burned using a zoned CLV drive will show how the disk was divided into zones. So the speed of the drive isn't how fast the disk is spinning, but rather how fast data can be read from the disk. These technologies allow data throughputs as high as 81 megabytes per second compared to the 1.35 megabytes per second for single speed. Now, here's an interesting topic, which I'm sure a lot of people doesn't know. Now, let's say, for instance, in a CD player or a CD drive, let's say that the drive is reading the disk at 56x using CAV. Data will pass over the laser at 162.8 miles per hour. And at that speed, the optical pickup can still distinguish between pits and lands as small as 9.9 .9 microns. That's 35.4 millionth of an inch. Now, if you were to take the spiral track that was on the CD and you were to lay it flat, it would stretch three, just over three and a half miles in length. Look at DVDs for an example. DVDs, they can be so accurate that they can distinguish between pits and lands as small as 15 and three quarter millionths of an inch. <laughs> now, that's tiny. And if you were to take a DVD with an eight and a half gigabyte capacity and you were to unwrap that spiral track, laid it flat, it would stretch seven and one third miles in length. It's interesting, isn't it? Now, CPU utilization is a feature that is not often discussed concerning optical drives. It is the ability for the drive to process data without involving the CPU. If the drive have to, has to use CPU resources to process data, then other processes can slow down. The less CPU processing, the more effective the drive, leaving the CPU to process more important tasks. Other factors include buffer memory, direct memory access, and interface type. Buffer memory is the same as that in a hard drive. It temporarily stores previously accessed data for quicker access because memory is far more faster to access than the optical drive. The more buffer memory, the better. Direct memory access gives the optical drive the ability to access system memory with minimum involvement of the CPU. Under normal conditions, drives had to use the CPU while processing the system memory, tying up the CPU from other tasks. 
With DMA, the CPU initiates the data transfer, then goes back to doing what it was, was doing until the transfer is complete, at which time the controller pings the CPU to signal the tra file transfer was complete. Interface type refers to the drive's connection to the motherboard. Optical drives use, can use IDE, SATA, USB, or Firewire. Drives using SATA connections and DMA use the least CPU resources. Now, before digital audio extraction, most of these older CD drives came with two options. Now, on these drives, you have your power connector, which is a four pin. This is a typical IDE type CD drive. It's got the selector switch for between master and slave. Now the two options that they give you, some of them, the older ones, only had one or the other. This one here is some of the few that have both. The, older fir the first older ones only had an audio connector, which is a 4-pin. It provides analog output when a disc, the drive plays an audio CD. It uses a cord much like this one here and an old audio card such as this. When you get the cable you simply plug the cable into the drive like that and you connect the other end to your uh, audio card or the connector to your motherboard, whichever audio you have, whether it's on the onboard with the motherboard or a spectrum card like this. But this is how you would connect the analog cord or the cable. So anytime the CD drive played audio disc, it would convert it to analog and then go to the sound card and convert it back to digital. Well, other Another option would be the digital audio. It's similar to the audio, except this point it's digital. It reads the disc, keeps it in digital, and sends it to the audio card. With digital extraction, it re goes through the data cable. Now, with digital audio extraction, also known as ripping, is a drive's ability to send audio data to the sound card without converting it to analog first. Earlier versions had to convert the audio data into analog, then transfer it to the sound card via a separate cable, just as I showed earlier. Then convert it back to digital on the motherboard for processing. With digital audio extraction, the drive can send raw audio data from the disk directly to the motherboard to process with little degradation of the original sound since there is no digital to analog conversions, remaining all digital. Optical drive burners, also known as writers, are called burners for a good reason. They literally burn the disk when writing data. Recordable discs use a die which allow data to be burned on the onto them. The laser can reach to 1,292 degrees Fahrenheit in microseconds. The laser burns pockmarks into the die to reduce the reflective properties of the die. Rewritable discs use a different die called crystalline metal alloy. Unlike recordable discs, Rewritable disc can be rewritten and erased over and over. Every blank writable disc has a strip called power, power calibration. Before a disc can be burned, the drive uses the power calibration strip to determine the laser power needed to effectively burn the disc. This test can be performed up to 99 times per disc. Early versions of drive burners had problems with buffer underrun errors. An event, the drive runs out of data during the write process when the system is unable to keep up with the drive. Buffer underrun protection allows the drive to pause writing in the event the buffer is not replenished, replenished in time and resumes writing when the system sends more data to write. 
Many newer drive writers use this technology. Since recordable and rewritable optical disks were in introduced, problems arise due to different dies that were used compared to the manufactured ROM disks. The die used is write in writable disks have a low reflective property that causes problems when played in a standalone player. The optical pickup relies on the reflective properties of the die. To solve the problem, an adjustable gain control circuit was incorporated in new drive designs. Drives and players bearing the multi-read logo can read CDR and CDR rewritable discs, and the multi-read 2 logo referred to the DVD rewritable and recordable discs. Optical drive writers will list three speeds, write, or read, write, and rewrite. The read speed is the maximum the drive can read the disk, but rarely achieved. The write speed is the maximum the drive can write to a blank disk. This speed is usually slower due to the delay for the laser to reach burn temperature. The rewrite speed is usually the slowest. This is due to the drive needing to erase previous data on the disk before it can rewrite new data to the disk. The laser must first heat the pockmarks to melt to the die's original form at a lower temperature, then use a higher temperature to write new data at the same time. There are three disk labeling technologies used in disk recording drives called light scribe, disk tattoo, and label flash. Lightscribe was the first direct to disk labeling that allowed the user to etch an image directly on the label side of the disk. These disks are coated with a reactive dye that changes color after absorbing 780 nanometer infrared laser light. The etched label will last the life of the disk as long as the disk is kept from prolonged exposure to light. Disk tattoo is a technology that allows a user to burn mot motifs and or images on the unused portion on the data side of the disk. Label flash is another technology similar to disk tattoo that allows the user to burn images on the label side of the disk using special label flash compatible disks. These disks have a 0.6 millimeter coating that protects the image from fading and from scratches. Finally, access time is also important to a drive speed because it must locate the data on a disk fast. It is a combination of a spindle speed, seek, latency, and spin up times. Access times are slower than a hard drive due to part by the spin up time. Optical drives do not keep the disk spinning as do hard drives, and the drive must spin up the disk to speed, or you know, the spin up speed, before data can be located. Lower spin up times means faster data access. The optical pickup must move or seek to the data location and wait the latency for the data to spin back around to the optical pickup to be read. Optical drives access times can range from 400 milliseconds to 85 milliseconds. The lower the access times, the faster your optical drive will be able to access data. Well, this has been an episode of ES Repair. I'm your host, Mr. Fixit. Thank you for watching.